Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. You know, we don't review enough environmentally aware films, do we? Come back, come back! I assure you, this annoying environmental film has one big difference from all the other annoying environmental films. This one has Michael Crawford! Hey, hey, come back here! Come back here! Stop looking at porn! This is once upon a forest! Yep, I guess the early 90s really had a freak out about destroying the environment. Not that it isn't worth saving, but watching this shit makes me want to burn down five unprotected rainforests and smoke three endangered species just to even it out. And you might as well add this movie to the list. It's stupid, it's predictable, it has that helium balloon Michael Crawford in it. It's a delight. So, let's sum up this movie's message by applying the appropriate visuals. This is Once Upon a Forest. So what kind of story would Once Upon a Forest be if it didn't start out Once Upon a Forest? Abigail! Ah! We're in Secret of Nim 2! Quick, hide all your air idols! There you are. Yes, Daddy. See you later. Love you. Me too, Abigail. I love me too, yes. So this is Abigail. She's off to school with her friends. A hedgehog named Russell, a mole named Edgar, and a badger named Michelle, played by a young Elizabeth Ross from Mad Men. I am so high. You'll need to be to get through this. If Uncle Cornelius asks, tell him it isn't my fault you're late. I shouldn't really say it's off to school, though, as much as for specifically chosen for whatever reason kids sitting around listening to that high-pitched fop from Hello, Dolly. Don't take another step. This is Cornelius. Cornelius. Close enough. He's played, as I said before, by Broadway sensation Michael Crawford. Now some consider him a gifted musical genius. Others say he's pretentiously over the top. But one thing's for sure though, he's a comedian's patagold. Prepare to be amazed. <laughs> well, what do you have to say? You're lucky Gerard Butler sings worse than you? No, 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 no. About this, my life's work. One day, I shall build it full size. I want to fly it next. Please, oh, don't no, be silly. No, no, You'll no, crash no. it. Correct, Abigail. You know, there's only so much whimsy that you can put into every word you say. I mean, does he talk this way with everything else he does? Oh, no! I'm out of toilet paper. I best go to the store, for I have a log that I really need to drop. Ooh. It's far too delicate for furlings. Oh, yeah. All the children in this film, by the way, are called furlings. Isn't that weird? Furlings? 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 Why is it fantasy films always have trouble just saying the word kids? It's always furlings, or younglings, or Shia LaBeouf. Just call them what they are, kids. No furlings! My books! <laughs> Never be free. Damn you! Curse you! So, despite the setback, Cornelius decides to still teach them the lesson for the day, which surprisingly is not smacking their right behinds. Now, what is this, Furlings? A willow, Cornelius. Correct. Did you know its bark can be used to cure rheumatism? What's rheumatism? Rheumatism. Yes. What is rheumatism? Is it when ruffles have ridges? I really, really, really like to know. Oh. I know. Rheumatism makes your bones hurt when the weather gets down. Correct again. Wow. Well, that's our first big wow moment, kids. Looking at a piece of bark. Although, don't give away the climax where they come across a half-urinated pine cone. <laughs> Furlings, we shall go home right now, if you are not going to take this ramble seriously. No, no. Did he really just call his own speech a ramble? 
Like, even he knows what he's saying is 100% bullshit. It's not very encouraging when your teacher acknowledges that what he's saying is totally pointless. Now, children, how would you like me to prattle on about my uncontrollable bowel syndrome? Yay! This ground isn't normal. It's... it's hard. And it smells kind of funny. Furlings! Will you stop calling him that? It sounds like a racial slur! <laughs> Russell. It's rare that a furling survives an encounter with... A monster? That is a good name for it. It's rare that a Range Rover doesn't ram you into ravaged roadkill, you rambunctious little retard. I want you to forget this place. What was it really, Cornelius? Man! Yes, man. Man has always... Now, you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm tired of putting man down all the time. What the hell is wrong with you people? Hell, I like man. I'm a man. And I don't like how we always have to say what a bunch of assholes we are. Hey, you know what's dangerous? You know what's really threatening to everybody? Animals. They eat people, have sharp teeth, and carry several diseases. If you should stay away from anything, stay away from them. Look at this poor woman. She's doing... God, I don't know what, but the lion doesn't like it. Animals. Evil. Bad. Wanna kill you. They don't make films about what a bunch of dicks they are, they just fucking eat you! Animals, you better eat them before they eat you. Look at that, right the fuck out of nowhere! Here's the big surprise! Wow. Oh, the boat. Get in, get Yippee. in! All right, Abigail, Russell, you paddle first. Perhaps we should sing a song. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream! But unfortunately, just as Cornelius was talking about the evils of man, one of the evils of man shows up, as a truckload of poisonous gas gets into an accident and spreads through the forest. Oh please, mother of God, tell me that green gas has the singing voice of Tim Curry. Green with envy, mm, crawling from my ass, you will smell my talk, 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 toxic gas. So as the furlings return, they see that everyone has abandoned their homes, and some didn't even make it out alive. Mommy! Daddy! Michelle! Mommy, is that you? Wait, Michelle! It's dangerous! No furlings! There's a deadly gas in there! They had Taco Bell just before they left home! We're not waiting! Cover your mouth! So Abigail finds that Michelle's parents didn't survive. Oh no, that is so sad. We should do a montage of all the times we see them to show just what impact they've left on us. I will Enjoy that? Okay. She also comes across Michelle, who apparently has passed out. Uh, Michelle. Come on, we all know it's not the first time an Elizabeth Ross character has breathed in something hazardous. I am so high. I wish I was but Abigail gets her out and they try to figure out how to save her. In the meantime, Cornelius tells the Furlings exactly what did this. A long time ago, I lived far away in a place called Willow Brook. We heard the sound. Mother and father told us to run. We got out, but mother and father, they didn't. Boy, this film is all about the parenting badger deaths, isn't it? If you're a badger and you help make life, your ass is gas. There was nothing I could do for my mother or father. Yeah, from what I understand, most people named Cornelius have bad blood against man. Beware the beast man, for he is the devil's pawn. But there is something you can do for Michelle. I need special plants. But everything in our meadow's dead. Then you must find another. Another meadow? There's no choice. You only have two days' time. You come with us, right? I wish I could, but I dare not leave her side. Uh, wouldn't it make more sense if you went looking for the plants and the children stayed with Michelle? Obviously, this is incredibly dangerous, so why risk losing the lives of four children instead of one? I mean, seriously, why don't you, a grown adult, go on this mission instead of sacrificing these little children? Up, up, up. Rheumatism? Oh yeah, rheumatism. Hee hee hee. We'll be by ourselves? No, you'll have each other. Which pretty much means you'll be by yourself. 
You'll want an early start. Now get some sleep. And if you dream, dream of better times for Michelle and Dapplewood. Boy, he's even telling them what to dream. This guy's a bit of a dickhole. I'm sorry, it's just, he didn't even ask them to do this or start out by saying, I'll go and then maybe let one of them volunteer instead. No, he just forced them to endanger their lives. It's kind of a jerk off. Up, 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 need we forget? Rheumatism. Rheumatism. Rheumatism, yes. And of course, it wouldn't be a Michael Crawford, well, anything, unless he's some. You've barely made a start, just one beat of my heart. Here's where people usually split on Crawford. You either love his singing or you're really annoyed by it. But I think we can all agree that it goes all over the place. Starting from a high-pitched soothingness. No matter how I mark, the hours light and dark. And then in a millisecond changing to a shaky low tone. Leave dark dreams behind. Whether I sing like this, or if I sing like this, either way I still will have a fan base. That and, to me, his singing always sounds like a two minute long sigh. But it's still early morning for you. Hey Mr. Crawford, they're out of Yoohoo at the grocery store. Oh, I guess I'll go with Fresco. Well, either way, he only gets one song. As the story must continue with the Feldings going into the wilderness to find a cure. They come across an open field where a dangerous owl looks out for prey. And of course, he finds it. One down, two more to go. Soon all the kids will be dead thanks to Cornelius' cowardliness. But hey, that's rheumatism. <gasps> but it's okay. Abigail uses a magnifying glass to make her teeth look bigger. And that actually scares the owl. Why is of all animals my furling ass? <laughs> After they escape, they try to get some shut-eye for the night so they'll have their strength in the morning. Suddenly, they hear something in the distance. Sorry, another movie seems to be passing through. They're going to the harbor beyond the White Towers. Grey Haven. So it sort of takes a while to figure out what's going on, but it looks like a bunch of these birds are having a funeral for another bird that hasn't died yet. See why it's confusing? What actually is going on is the birds are saying goodbye to a younger bird. A birdling, if you will. Because he got stuck in the mud and seems to slowly be sinking. And when I say slowly, I mean not moving at all. It's not like the parents could just bring him food and still look after him. No, no, he's a goner. Throw the funeral even though he's alive. Eat the corpse. Goodbye, mother. Bosworth. Oh, my son. But the kids figure out a way to get the little bird out, so this calls for several minutes of musical padding. That was pointless. But the birds are kind enough to say where another meadow lies for them to find the plants they're looking for. The only path lies that way, across a cursed ground over which my flock will not even fly. That is on account of our rheumatism. So they try to make it further, but come across a bunch of bulldozers and other machines that they confuse for yellow dragons. But they manage to escape and eventually do come across another meadow. Heck, it even has other animals in it. They're just here to steal our food. No, we're just looking for Lungwort and Eyebright. We need the herbs to help a sick badger. Why would a mole, a mouse, and a hedgehog want to help a, a foul-smelling, worm-eating, good-for-nothing badger? Um, Pop-Tarts? It's not Pop-Tarts! Hey, look at all the Eyebright. That's right, they come across the Eyebright, one half of the plants that they needed. So where's the other plant located? <laughs> 
No one in Oakdale's ever been able to reach it. I know how to get up there. We use Cornelius's flapper wing -a thing. Russell, good thinking. Uh, yeah. Just take the plans for a device that took months and months to build and make it ten times bigger in just a matter of a few hours. Yeah, I like to see that hat. What the fuck? Okay, there's MacGyver and then there's God. And this is... MacGodfer. There is no way you can do this. Yay! We're flying! So on top of getting it to fly, they can also steer the thing. Funny, I wonder how the mechanics of leaves, sticks, and animal dung can manage to put together complete aviation control. <laughs> so Abigail tries to grab the plant, but misses. Luckily, Edgar's there to save her, but they come across a major problem. It's no use now. The long wharf's gone. We failed. No, we haven't. What you, how the hell did that happen? Was the plant trying to commit suicide and it just happened to land on the plane? What the raging hell? Oh well, who cares? The fairlings take their plants and decide to go home. Wow, getting some good height on that thing, aren't they? In fact, that begs the question, if they could build this thing in just a few hours, why didn't they build it before they left on this adventure? Wouldn't it have cut the traveling time in half? If it, why couldn't Cornelius build it while the children were asleep, let me guess. Ah, to the H, to the E, to the U, M, A, tism. Rheumatism. So the kids land and finally make it back home with the plants to make the cure. It's okay, it turns out she just needs some aspirin. How are you? My furlings, you're back. Did you get the herbs? But it turns out more shit is after them as it seems evil man is looking for them outside. After exposing some mole frontal nudity, we see that Edgar gets caught, as man will no doubt sacrifice him to their pollution god. There you go, little fella. What's this? Man? Reasonable? Okay, clearly you have no idea how early 90s animated environmental films work. Rule number one, man is the devil, anything not man is good, and your movie must bomb. You got two of those down, but number one is still a biggie. So after wrapping her in a slim suit, they try giving her the herbs and wait until morning to see if it works. But sadly, it doesn't look like she's waking up. Mama? Oh, of course! The missing ingredient! Pikachu tears mixed with the heart of Inspector Gadget while magic moonbeams drop down during the chanting of We Care after taking her from the Genesis planet. Whoopsie! Oh, Michelle, my child, you're all right. You three. You have changed so much these past few days. You're no longer my furlings. You are fern natures. And wouldn't you know it, all the family members come back at the exact same time to collect their children. Oh, what a happy day! Uncle Cornelius! All the mommies and daddies are coming back! Not all, my dear. Well, that's a fucking downer. Talk about Captain Buzzkill! How many other happy endings do you ruin with your sad, awkward facts? Woohoo! I just won the lottery! Yes, but 9-11 still happened. I guess nothing will ever be the same again. Will it, Uncle Cornelius? Well, my dear, if we all work as hard to save Dapplewood, it will be. Does that mean my mom and dad will come back to life? No, dear, they're dead and buried. Well, not yet buried. Hey, I just figured out a fun activity for you to do tomorrow. So that was Once Upon a Forest, or as the 90s likes to call it, Fern Gully 18. This isn't the worst of those environmental films, as it does try to take a few more chances, like keeping the parents dead and not making man entirely evil. But it doesn't do those elements especially well. The characters are pretty bland, the animation's okay, but nothing film-worthy. And it's just the same message that every other environmental film in the 90s had. Well, not horrible, it's pretty weak. It just didn't feel like it brought anything that any other film hasn't brought before. It's just a weak, weak film. So you see, it didn't kill you to hear another environmental review, did it? 
I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it. You guys are asses. Aromatism.